Now I want to look at what happens to the acceleration of the car moving freely along the incline as I increase the incline by adding dominoes at this point. We can see that there's, there are actually two dominoes here uh, supporting this. Um, I need two dominoes partly because we have some friction and we have to have enough slope to overcome the friction in the wheels of the car, but also uh, because this whole setup isn't perfectly level. Okay, it's fairly level, but uh, I didn't build it with an eye to uh, great precision. Okay, so first thing we'll notice is that if I give the car a poke, It'll travel along the incline. Now, I don't know if it would have made it to the end. It looked like it might. It was about to run off the edge, so I stopped it. Let's try again. Yeah, it got to the end. Did it speed up or slow down? It's a little hard to see that. Uh, you could, if you had an accurate timer, time it to the halfway point, time it to the end, and see if the average velocity in the first half was equal to the average velocity in the whole uh, distance, or that the average velocity in the second half was equal to the average velocity in the whole distance, or the average velocity in the first half equal to the average velocity in the second half. Those, <coughs> excuse me, those results should be pretty consistent. Um, and that would be an interesting experiment but we're not going to do that right now. Okay, let's do this again. I'm going to give this a poke. Now the car did definitely come to stop there. Let's give it a poke from here. And another poke from here. Now we could measure time and distances and determine whether the accelerations were pretty much the same on those three intervals. We're not going to do that. I'm going to mark off the board in hand spans if I can find a piece of chalk. Not much. It's a little nub of chalk, but that'll do. Okay. Hand span to here. Another hand span to here. And those should be pretty equal distances. That should be a hand span. That should be a hand spin. That one's maybe a little long. So there's some uncertainty. That's okay. We're not going to get high precision results here, but we're going to get some plausibility results. Okay. So now I'm going to give the car a poke, and it would be possible to time the car from the time I poke it to the time it comes to rest. Now I'm going to count to three, give the poke on three. One, two, three. Okay, took a couple of seconds, and you can see that it went a significant fraction, uh, somewhere between half and a whole wavelength, you could estimate. Uh, remember, you don't have great parallax with this camera, so there's another source of uncertainty that needs to be assessed. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Try to poke it a little harder, hopefully not so hard that it goes off the end, but we'll see. One, two, three. Okay, and again, one, two, three. Oh, came right up to the edge. Very good. Thought it was going to go off the side there for a minute. Okay, uh, from those three trials, we can get a pretty good idea of what the acceleration of the car is on this ramp, or at least the average acceleration from one end to the other, and possibly whether the acceleration is uniform over this nearly level ramp. Now, I'm going to add a domino under here, but first I want to measure how far it is from the point where the ramp hits the, the tabletop or the, the supporting ledge here, and the point where the dominoes contact the ramp on which the car is rolling. So 
I've got four dominoes stretched out here. I'm going to mark the end of those four dominoes with this domino and move them along here so that we have a good measure of that distance. And then I'm going to take one of the dominoes on the end. It doesn't quite come up to the point where the dominoes contact the, uh, the ramp. Then another one. Okay? Now that looks to me like I've added two dominoes but on the second domino we get less than halfway. We see that the point of contact here is less than halfway along the domino. And you can estimate that from what you see. But it looks like it's nine domino, I'm sorry, let's see, four and four, yeah, that's eight and a fraction. So you can, you can take what you see and determine this distance as uh, a fraction of a domino length. We can also add another domino here, and that lines up pretty well with this point. So now we kind of have a conversion between domino lengths and hand spans. Okay, I'm going to put a domino here. I'm going to use one of these dominoes. Now, these are thin dominoes, uh, the thinnest dominoes uh, I think I have. Uh, manufacturers have been thinning dominoes down over the years simply to confound the validity of what we do in my lab, but they've also added uh, a measurable degree of uncertainty to the thickness of a domino, and that's actually uh, to our advantage if we're trying to learn about how to assess uncertainties. Now, just to be sure, in the process of adding dominoes that I don't move this point of contact and hopefully don't knock everything off of the ledge here, um, I'll put a mark here. And now you see that if I release the car, it will accelerate down the incline by itself. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to release the car in three. And I'm actually going to put a domino at this point. So we can, number one, stop the car. Number two, maybe get a pretty good indication of exactly when the car hits that point. Now, I don't think we're going to get timing that's accurate to that degree. I'm not sure the video is going to measure time that accurately. I think I'll do one more thing. I'm going to add a domino here. And to actually, let me put that domino. I don't know if that's going to sustain. OK, I'm going to knock that domino out of the way with this domino. So you're going to hear the contact between this domino and this domino. The car will start at that instant. And then you'll hear the contact down here. And hopefully um, that will allow a significant improvement in the accuracy of timing depending on the means that you use to do the timing. So here we go. Ready? Well. Theoretically, the car should have started. There's apparently a little unevenness in the ramp at that point. Let's try again.